In an interview with Fox News, Senator Tom Cotton decided to talk about the For the People Act and Bernie Sanders, and he lied through his teeth. I mean, he was blatant and shameless, and it's so bad that you'd think he'd be a little bit afraid of how disingenuous he would come across. Nonetheless, he didn't care, and the claims he made were so outrageous that I feel like even a Fox News viewer should be able to identify them as untruthful. But I mean, uh, regardless, we'll watch what he had to say. And then when we come back, um, there's a lot that I want to say in regards to this segment. And the Congress must address that in any and every way. I mean, that's the that's the uh, the really idiotic argument that he's making. H.R. 1 nationalizes elections. But Joe Manchin is offering a memo of a, a halfway point. Make Election Day a holiday requires uh uh, uh, require all states to give absentee ballots and partisanship gerrymandering, require voter ID. You saw the memo. You saw the H.R. 1. Where do you stand? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Republicans don't have a plan to nationalize our elections, Brian, because we don't think we should nationalize our elections. We trust our states and their counties and cities to run our elections, and they've done a pretty good job of it for over 200 years. But that Bernie Sanders line, I mean, I just got to say, it's rich for a guy who honeymooned in the Soviet Union to be criticizing <laughs> Republican governors and legislatures for undermining democracy. Um, I mean, he said, he said in an op-ed over the weekend that Republicans like me are trying to start a new Cold War um, with China. China, I guess he's still smarting from his loss in the first Cold War with Russia. Um, but this bill, just to give you one example of how bad it is, would actually take your tax dollars and send them to Bernie Sanders and any other politician yep. running for office to run their campaign. So think about that. Arkansans would be subsidizing Bernie Sanders' campaigns. Yeah. Um, I don't think many Americans want to see their tax dollars to the tune of hundreds right. of millions of dollars going to support a po political politicians who they oppose attacking politicians they support. Right. You also mentioned gerrymandering, the process of rigging electoral districts. This bill would allow Democratic operatives in all 50 states to draw districts lines just like they have in places like Maryland and Illinois and it's all it's all built guys it's all built on a fabrication that Republican governors and legislatures are somehow suppressing the vote when in reality states like Georgia are actually passing laws that expand voting access compared to Democratic states like New York and Delaware all these states are doing is making it easy to vote but hard to cheat so I don't even know where to begin there's a lot to unpack there but I'll start with their use of the word nationalize uh, when I think about the word nationalize, uh, you know, it conjures up images of a government taking control of a privately owned and operated business or entity of some sort. But the way that they used nationalize was was very unique, we'll say. They were saying, well, you know, this For the People Act is an attempt to nationalize elections. Now, by the traditional definition of nationalize, I, I think that having the government own elections is a good thing. Do you really want to outsource elections to private corporations? But it's because they were deliberately using nationalize in a really weird way. And what they were saying was basically, this is going to nationalize elections to the extent that it lays out standards at the national level that apply to all 50 states. That's a little bit weird. Just say these national standards are going to apply to all 50 states, and states are better at running elections than the federal government. They could say something like that, but they did it. And there's a really specific reason for that. They deliberately used the word nationalize because they want to prime individuals who are watching Fox News to think about socialism. So if they use the word nationalize, then people will think, oh, for the People Act. This is nationalization, and nationalization is oftentimes linked to socialism, and socialism bad, so therefore, for the People Act must be bad as well. That's exactly what they're trying to do. It is incredibly disingenuous, but this tactic is effective. Now, when it comes to federal standards for elections, this is not anything that's new, right? States have control over elections, and usually these are run at the local level, but there are federal standards that exist. States and local governments can't just do whatever they want, so federal standards already exist. It's just that there will be more federal standards 
to make democracy stronger. But they don't like that, and they can't really say what the For the People Act is in actuality because if they just explained what it was to Fox News viewers in a good faith and accurate way, then they'd probably support it. So what do they do? They lie and they fear monger. But the claims about the For the People Act perhaps weren't as outrageous as the claims that Tom Cotton made about Bernie Sanders, which to me were just downright bizarre and stupid. So, um... Tom Cotton said, that Bernie Sanders line, I just got to say, it's rich for a guy who honeymooned in the Soviet Union to be criticizing Republican governors and legislatures for undermining democracy. Wait, so because Bernie Sanders honeymooned in the Soviet Union, automatically that assumes that he endorsed every single element of the Soviet government and the Soviet regime, and especially... He supported the, the authoritarianism. So, since Bernie Sanders honeymooned in Soviet Union, he is forever tainted. Is that really the logic that you want to use? So, I mean, Tom Cotton, I'm sure he's been to Israel. Here's a photograph of him shaking hands with the former prime minister of Israel. So, it's also true that even though Israel is an apartheid regime, and I'm sure that he definitely endorses that, being the fascist that he is, but this regime also offers guaranteed basic health care to every single citizen. They have a universal health care system. So, since Tom Cotton has been seen with the former prime minister of Israel, he is automatically endorsing every single element of Israel's regime, including universal health care. And since universal health care is linked to to socialism, according to Republicans, then that must mean that Tom Cotton is also a socialist. And since socialism is associated with the Soviet Union, that also means that um, Tom Cotton must also embrace the authoritarianism that Bernie Sanders embraces. I mean, I'm being intentionally hyperbolic here, but this is the logic that he's using, right? It's like saying, hey, I saw you eating, uh, you know, a chocolate ice cream cone, and since chocolate is the same color as shit, you must like to eat feces like this is the level of logic that we're operating with here and he knows that it's disingenuous but i don't think that the average fox news viewer who sees him say that is gonna put much thought into it he adds um bernie sanders said in an op-ed over the weekend that republicans like me are trying to start a new cold war with china i guess he's still snorting i think that was the word that he used uh, from his first loss in the cold war with china so not only is he suggesting here that bernie sanders um, embraces the authoritarianism of the Soviet regime, but Bernie Sanders also is a traitor. That's correct. During the Soviet years, when Bernie Sanders was a public servant, he was a mayor of Burlington, Vermont, he actually was more uh, of a supporter of the Soviet Union than the United States of America. He was a traitor. That's the actual allegation that Tom Cotton is making here. It's, I mean, look, it's almost like I give him credit for being so bold and confident, but yet wrong at the same time. This is Dunning-Kruger in, in action, but this is a very, very stupid, sick burn. It's, it's idiotic, Tom Cotton. And I'm sorry, but it is the case that it seems like Republicans and a lot of Democrats, to be fair, want a Cold War with Russia. You keep ramping up the hawkish behavior, you're saber rattling against China in some instances. So, I mean, Bernie Sanders isn't wrong to point that out. Now, let's look at what he says about H.R. 1. What H.R. 1 would do, and, and I'm going to read the full quote because um, I think it's worthwhile. It would take your tax dollars and send them to Bernie Sanders and any other politician running for office to run their campaigns. So think about it. Arkansans would be subsidizing Bernie Sanders' campaign. I don't think many Americans want to see their tax dollars to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars going to support politicians who they oppose, attacking politicians they support. Uh, this is basically a really long and roundabout way of saying, I support our current system of legalized bribes. Because what he's trying to do is demonize public financing of elections. Now, I think that if he actually presented this to Fox News' audience in a straightforward and factual way, they wouldn't agree with him. So what does he do? He tries to sell it in this really bad way. Well, actually, think about this. Do you want your tax dollars to go to Bernie Sanders? When all you have to do is think about this longer than a few seconds and you realize how this is objectively good if you care about democracy. Taxes aren't just going to subsidize the campaigns of people who Republicans don't like. It's also going to subsidize the campaigns of folks like Marjorie Greene and even fascists like Tom Cotton. You see, the way that elections work in America, where you've basically commodified our democracy, is 
you have a higher chance of getting elected if you have more money. So politicians have this incentive to go to billionaires, right? Go to uh, these giant funders who could give them millions of dollars, donate all of that at once to their super PAC, and then they have a greater likelihood of uh, of winning their election. But what the For the People Act would do is offer matching funds. So that way, if you are an average citizen and you donate $25 to a politician, well, that's going to be matched. So it would be a $50 donation. So this further incentivizes politicians to actually get grassroots funding for their campaigns. And if you do this, corrupt fools like Tom Cotton wouldn't have to beg the Koch brothers for money. I mean, there's a reason why a 2014 Princeton University study found that policy outcomes don't reflect the will of normal Americans. They reflect the will of business elites and special interests. And that's because of the fundraising model. It's legalized bribery effectively, and what the For the People Act does is even the playing field, make normal Americans more competitive with the oligarchs in America. Now, it's not perfect, because this matching funds clause in the For the People Act does exclude third-party candidates, but passing the For the People Act wouldn't make third-party candidates any less likely to get elected than they are now. We need electoral reform, but that's a different story for a different day. Long story short, what it would do is it would incentivize grassroots donations by offering publicly matching funds. Tom Cotton knows that if he just said this is what it would do, Republicans would probably even support that because most Americans know that money is an issue in American politics. But um, again, he doesn't want them to support it, so he's trying to poison the well, and then he tells them what it is. It's just, it's such, if I were a Republican and I found out the way that they lied to me, I would be so furious, right? Just present them with the details, present Fox News' audience with the details as they are objectively so, give them the facts, and let them make the decision. But Tom Cotton knows that if he actually told folks what the For the People Act was, they'd likely support it. So this is why he has to lie. He's insulting your intelligence if you're a Republican. Do you stand for this? Now he also says here um, that gerrymandering is the process of rigging electoral politics. This bill would allow Democratic operatives in all 50 states to draw district lines just like they have in places like Maryland. Now, this right here is a blatant lie. He's just straight up lying. So, gerrymandering is a thing that happens. Um, mostly Republicans engage in it. Uh, Democrats also do, but Republicans are far more egregious. I mean, just Google what Dan Crenshaw's district looks like, and that is the perfect example of gerrymandering. But it would outsource the redrawing of district lines to independent commissions so they redraw district lines in a nonpartisan way. This actually would even the playing field. But what he's saying is, actually, this is going to give Democrats more power. No. That's a lie. But Tom Cotton doesn't want independent commissions to redraw district lines because he wants Republicans to actually be able to do what he said. Rig the process, right? Redraw district lines to turn Republican seats into safe seats across the country and give them a, a better chance of getting elected in the House. It's just, he keeps lying. And it's so frustrating to watch this because his lies are so transparent. Like, even if you don't know about the details of the For the People Act, with how purposefully hyperbolic he's being, like, the average viewer should be able to see through him, should be able to notice that this guy, like, the things that he's saying, they seem a little bit out there, right? There's got to be more to the story. He's got to be lying to me. But Fox News' viewers are gullible and they likely eat that shit up. And it's frustrating. This is why people in America are so stupid. Because they get misinformed and lied to by politicians and news networks who are supposed to actually be giving them the details, the facts. But I mean, we saw the way that he misrepresented Bernie Sanders and the For the People Act. Bernie being in Russia means... He is a traitor to America, he supports authoritarianism, and wanting to have independent commissions redraw district lines, that is tantamount to uh, Democrats wanting to rig elections. It's just, he's a liar, and he should be ashamed of himself, but he has no shame because this individual is deeply authoritarian himself. So he doesn't care uh, about how uninformed he's making people, he just cares about the outcome, right? The uh, ends justify the means.